Hello there, welcome back to Hamilton's uh, Ferrari journey. As we did last time, we have given the other cars a bit of a boost. We'll have to see if that actually, uh, well, turns into actual advantage for the other teams over the next two or three, four or five races. If it doesn't, I think we're just going to start developing car parts that has weight to them. Because the AI is terrible about shedding weight, and it's a huge advantage that the player can... Well, take advantage of. So I think what we're going to do is probably get ourselves back to that uh, 10, 15, maybe even the base 20 kilogram line of uh, of um, weight in order to limit our performance a little bit. But if we take a look at the most recent changes, we have been pushed down to third in low and medium speed cornering, seventh in high speed, 11 top speed, the rest effectiveness. And uh, the car that has been received the biggest boost here is actually the Mercedes car, but it's not necessarily viewable here because as you can see, this is George Russell's Mercedes. But if we change the car to Sainz, for instance, he's suddenly third in top speed, first in low speed, fifth in medium, 11th in high speed. And he even has two KPH on us in the top speed department. Decent chunk here on the low speed as well. So I'm, I'm uh, very curious if this is gonna, how this is gonna end up because as you can see, he actually also is incredibly close in the medium speed department. So the fact that the cars are very different is also a bit of a concern. As you can see, Paris's Red Bull is absolutely dog shit in the corners. But the Red Bulls here have received a slight nerf, but they are getting closer in terms of performance. But our cars are getting more and more the same. So I'm looking forward to seeing a little bit more development. But yeah, even the AlphaTauri here is far behind the medium. But uh, we're getting closer now to a point where I think we can have a bit more competition with the Aston currently probably having the best car. So I'm very, very curious to see how this is going to work out. They have 2.5 kph top speed on us. We're going to Canada. Top speed is important. So yeah, let's see if this actually works out into a bit more entertaining races. And I have no idea why the Red Bull got hit as hard as they did with this uh, edit. I tried a few of them. Generally, the Red Bull had actually received the same boost as the Aston, but I believe since the Aston has the lower starting point, the boost is bigger. Uh, I still don't fully understand how the editor uh, does its modifications, because at some point, at some points, it seems to just affect one car. But the way I understand it is that it actually affects the parts themselves, so I might just need to have to run a race, edit, run a race, edit, and just keep on doing that. So... We'll test a few different things over the course of this save as well with the editor. As I said, I haven't used it much, so I'm not too, uh, not too <laughs> familiar with it. But hopefully, we can make something, uh, something good happen and keep things a little bit interesting. So we have suspension and side pods in low stock. Are we manufacturing new ones? Apparently, we're not. So let's go ahead and get two of these manufactured, and also. Suspension, so we're going to be switching on to these new ones at one point anyway, so let's just go ahead and make two of those for what the ones that we currently use to break. We only have one extra chassis. I assume we're making a new chassis, but as I said, we're probably going to be switching them out due to weight at one point anyway, so we are making rear wings, we are front wings. Yeah, it looks like we're good on the other parts. But yeah, I, I'm a little bit unsure what we can do here to keep, make things more interesting, if you will. Um... Because that's actually kind of difficult to establish. And here's the rear wing that we first designed. This one is not one that we're going to be putting on the car. It's basically just to improve the cornering ability. And we could put it on the car to make it a little bit weaker, honestly. That does tell us we're going to need one more rear wing to keep us a spare. And let's go ahead here and design that new one. That should be a fairly sizable increase in ability here particularly if we go lowest in lifespan tune these down a little bit and yeah a little bit of cornering ability a little bit of dirty air a little bit of top speed but as i said i think we are going to start making parts that does have the sliders in the middle total extra weight um three kilograms and we'll just have these parts available to us if we decide to do this of course it'll take us probably you know until summer break to get this sorted but I think it would be just good to have it have the option to do that if it turns out that the editing just isn't as effective or works in a way that would, you know, keep things a bit uh, a bit more fun and interesting because that's kind of the goal behind playing a game. To have fun, to try different things out, 
And that's also kind of what this saber has developed into. So we're focusing on Hamilton, but we're also focusing on messing around with the editor. So do dual focus here. Let's just jump to Canada and see if the changes that we made actually results in a bit more competition. Because right now we are the 14th team in high speed cornering, seven low speed, fifth medium, and the cars do have the same pass on them. So it could be that we'll be having a little bit more competition in this next race. Let's see how it goes. So the changes we've made has had some effect, but it has been a rainy qualifying, which has led to some interesting things like Stroll beating out Alonso. It is Canada. Stroll gets a buff here, I feel. Magnussen in 6th, Sonoda in 10th, Ocon in 9th. Um, so as you can see, there is some, some shenanigans out and about. Sainz just couldn't set a good time in Q2. He's 3 seconds behind uh, Norris. So as you can imagine here, there's some shenanigans going out on with these cars, but the rain just makes it worse. So I think we're still going to need a couple of races just to stabilize. But we're going to be starting 3rd and 7th in a race that is going to become wet. And as I've mentioned before, wet is kind of the weakness of uh, the cars that I design. We are bad at following. We need the DRS to really get a little bit of help overtaking. So the wet is going to be problematic to deal with. But at the same time, I think we'll be I think we'll be okay. Let's see what we can do in terms of strategy. The weather is expected to come around lap 40. And then just keep on entering till the end. So we need to set up a strategy that allows us to go to lap 40. Uh, can we do that on just mediums? We can. Uh, but the question is, is it going to be quicker to say do this? And then we go on to a soft tire. Uh, before we go into the rain. And by the looks of this, I think this is just the best strategy. Because of the fact that, well, if we, let's say lap 42 is going to be our estimate here. It's going to allow us to turn these tires up to aggressive or even attack if we feel like it, if we feel the need. And also, if the rain arrives uh, later, arrives earlier, again, we just have that flexibility. And I think that's going to be kind of the key here. We can, of course, have a look at other strategies as well. Let's say that we do uh, potentially soft into soft, just to try that out. See if we can get some overtakes done on the soft tire before we go into the inters on lab 42 again. Compare that with our previous strategy. And as you can see, it's about a second quicker. So that could be something we do, but that's of course going to uh, kind of force us to pit earlier. It isn't necessarily a good thing. It's just a couple laps earlier, but still depends on the on the gaps. Because rain is coming, we can do something like soft soft. Let's just have a quick look here before I think too much. Because again, pit stops are short here in Canada, which means that pitting... You can usually earn that time back. Degradation time, you have 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 laps of advantage, or thereabouts, 11, 12 really, over the mediums. Medium to hard, you have, well, medium to hard, you basically have an advantage for, what would this be, 30 laps, 29 laps? Yeah, so we want to avoid the hards if we can. And uh, degradation differences that aren't actually too big. So the main time gain you'd get would actually be from running the tires in a more aggressive manner. So I think running attack on the mediums is going to be the best thing available to us. And then we go into a soft tire and then we can run those two on attack if we see the need. And then we'll just adjust as we get closer to the rainy period. I think that's going to be the best way to deal with uh, this situation. But yeah, uh, the main reason why I'm saying that degradation doesn't play a huge part here is due to the fact that it's so low. And what I mean by this can be quickly summed up in there's just 300 degradation difference between the soft and the hard. Five tenths. So even soft to hard here, would, this also would hold an advantage of 15 to 18 laps basically their entire life cycle. They would be running quicker than the hards. So yeah, I, I do think that Hards could be potentially good in, if you do a just a one-stopper. Oh, sorry, a no-stopper before the rain. But I think we're going to go with this and try and make up some places, get that confidence up to the peak levels that we can go for before the rain arrives. Because if we're going to have to do overtakes in the rain, we're going to need peak confidence. Red Bull in the front line. We're second line. Alongside Stroll. 
Gonna be very interesting to see how this actually uh, pans out, I think. And we're already losing positions here. Leclerc being fought by uh, losing a position to Alonso. Which isn't that surprising, but it looks like we are kind of coming back at him. He is on the hard tyre. As the only hard tyre driver, Paris has gone for soft, just happened on mediums. Hamilton retains third, so it is looking good. I'm quite curious on how this race is going to develop in terms of uh, the other teams, because again, we have been messing around with their cars. I see that actually results in a little bit more competition. I didn't actually sh showcase it too well during the quali, but the quali as well was very close, but at the same time, it might not be fully representative because of the fact that we did have rain. Well, let's Leclerc gets an overtake on Magnussen. Right, let's follow the action now at turn seven. Can they squeeze by? That's a pretty good move. But yeah, for now we'll do what we usually do. We'll sit back, allow the first uh, stint here to just kind of run its course. We are going to go full attack till the end of the stint to see if we can get some overtaking done. And uh, if we do, that's definitely going to help with building up that confidence. The close already reached the peak, so it's looking good. Well, it's no longer looking okay. good because Leclerc has had an incident now, immediately after I said three. that. Now that's going to make things a little bit interesting. That is him out. Unfortunately. VSC, VSC. So just keep an eye on that delta. Yep. Brave front crash. I'm very curious on how much damage they did to our components, but as you can see, even peak confidence while running the lowest risk, you can still crash. It happens. So, yeah, that is a bit unfortunate. I do think that we're still in a decent position, though. There is already some gaps forming, even though, again, we crashed very, very early here. Just lap three, I think. But yeah, we aren't going to keep Hamilton uh, pushing. See if he can get past the Red Bulls before he ends up pitting. We're getting increasingly closer to the pit window. Uh, we're going to wait a few laps longer to pit because degradation is lower than expected because of virtual safety car. Uh, but we're having actually struggles here with keeping up with the Red Bulls. And as you can see, Stroll's actually caught up to us and is currently causing us some grief. So that's not great. We also have the Reese who has pitted as one of the first cars pitting. And as you can see, Paris, Stroll, they're all pushing together. So... It's a bit of an interesting situation here where everyone is kind of trying to push. And we see here Stroll pitting comes out behind Piastri. So I think we want to try and push for a few more laps here. Uh, just to try and increase that gap a little bit. We're running 16 twos. The rest behind us are actually running somewhat similar lap times. So that does put us in a position where we might just need to pit. So that we don't get that left behind. I think that might work what we do here. We do pit Hamilton now. We've also gone way above on fuel because we are going to get rain. And if we take a look here, the rain is still expected to be around lap 40. So I do think pitting here is the correct choice. And we'll just have to take a little bit of good care of those soft tires. Probably run them on standard. And then maybe even light lap C. I think we can even run them on aggressive if you want to look at it from a different perspective. Rebels, neither do pit. We are currently in the pits. Let's see where we come out. I think we should come out uh, a little bit behind Stroll there. But as you can see, him pitting earlier than us bought him a good three seconds. But that's what you expect when your tires are a second faster lap. He didn't get bogged down behind other cars, which is what kind of what we hoped for. And this could put us in a bit of a uh, risky, risky window now in terms of trying to get that podium. So we do have a little bit of work out of I cannot ahead of us here. I still think that we're going to just keep on running standard for now until we get a little bit closer to the rain. Then we'll make a decision on if we want to go full attack, aggressive, uh, whatnot. Perez is currently in the pits. He had a pit stop issue that almost allowed us to come out ahead of him. But yeah, even then, the Red Bull still has a fairly sizable advantage here. And Verstappen now should pit too. And he does. And he too is going to come out ahead. Unless he suffers a problem. But Alonso here has actually been caught up by Stroll already. So as you can imagine, hitting early does have its advantages. Stroll is actually running full on attack on these soft tires, I think. Unless he actually went on to older soft tires. So maybe, just maybe, I want to tune up our aggression a little bit. The gradation isn't super high around here. So 
let's turn it up. Let's do a little bit of a gamble. And I still think we'll hold out until the rain arrives. But if we don't, I'm going to be sad. We've had a, another crash here. Crash involving multiple cars. Let's see who's had an incident. It's the Reese. And just a minor touch there. But that could have been bad if he uh, got the McLaren as well. Yeah, that's him missing a front end wing plate. Now, Paris and Verstappen has slowed down a little bit on their tire usage, but even then, we're a good 10 seconds behind, so... Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it looks like the Red Bulls have really, really woken up, and we might need to just focus on developing the car again to compete with them. Sainz and Russell are also doing okay, not great. 15 seconds behind after 35 laps. So rain is but, imminent. Uh, as you can imagine, it should still be fine. Rain is imminent, but lap times here are about a second a lap, so we're just going to go ahead and push fully out. Hamilton gets Alonso there, who's still running on all their hards, so that shouldn't come as a surprise. But yeah, uh, the Red Bulls here are a little bit better than I anticipated. We'll have to see if we can actually catch up to them. So the rain levels are increasing. We're currently at uh, half a millimeter worth of uh, track wetness. I think we're going to jump in at 0.70 or so, so we'll do at least one more lap here. I think that's going to be fine. Maybe even another one after this. We have also gotten Stroll, and Alonso is falling down the order. So the hard strategy not working super well. One more lap here, I think we're going to take before we do jump into the pits. But it looks like it isn't going to be super wet for a while. So as you see, it's still going to take a while to get to proper inters. So we still have a little bit of tire burning left here. And we are 9 seconds behind Perez, who's the second behind Verstappen. So the gap hasn't really changed here, but Russell and Sainz are getting closer to the, uh, the Aston Martins. So we are getting at least a little bit of a 3, maybe 4 way fight here if uh, development goes right for the other teams. Magnussen, the first one who pulls the trigger, jumps into the pits here. Let's see what he comes out on. Sorry, Norris has also done it. But yeah, that does seem to be basically around the point now where we should be considering pitting. But at the same time, I kind of want to take care of the Indies a little bit. But with Paris now into the pits, do we want to gamble on pitting alongside Paris? Or do we want to push for another lap? That's a big question. Let's see. What is the expected lap time on the Indies compared to the softs? About four seconds slower. I think we do one more lap just to play it safe. Um, well, not really play it safe, but like we don't have any pressures when it comes to pitting. And I think it's going to pay off because, again, it is going up very slow, usually around 0 0.8 E. 0 0.80 0. It's usually when you want to jump into the pits for this. But as you can see, our lap times are getting progressively slower here. <laughs> Excuse me. So I think we'll just mirror what Verstappen's going to do. And get into the pits now. Now we do want to at least turn down to standard. So we don't immediately burn these tires. See if we can have a good Ferrari stop. We did 2.6 seconds. Show with a bit of a pit stop issue. We are going to come out in third most likely. Or did Gasly? No, Gasly still on the uh, soft tires. He did kind of what we were intending to. Alonso eats a pit stop issue as well. So both Ocon and Gasly electing to stay out the longest, I believe, on their soft tire. Salkenberg, Sargent, same. But yeah, going to be interesting in now to see if we can. Uh, of course, close down to the Red Bulls, but I think, just judging by how th things have gone this weekend, that I'd be happy with third. Yeah. We'll allow the tires to heat up. We'll make a decision on what we do in terms of uh, attack or not. It is going to become wetter, wetter, wetter then this is probably going to still be inters. So we'll have to figure out how we want to handle these inter tires. It's not a long left of this race, but I think we're just going to run them as aggressively as we can without uh, cooking them. Then we'll see if uh, if we can catch up to the Red Bulls ahead. So let's see how that goes. Verstappen Paris here, you can kind of see that we did benefit from pitting later because the gap was a lot bigger before we pitted. And... Paris was just a couple of seconds behind Verstappen. Now he's almost seven. So waiting uh, was definitely the right choice. Might have been even better to wait another lap. But we are closing down on Paris pretty rapidly. These tires can go up to 105 degrees. So we also have plenty of uh, 
playtime here, but Russell actually overtakes right us. You can take a look now. What happened? Right, we're taking the second corner. Oh yeah, we still have the RS. I'm surprised it caught up that quick though. Maybe the Mercs here. Might be that uh, we made the wrong choice here for good old, uh, good old Hamilton. Let's see if we can get back at Russell immediately. We could not. I want to get ahead of him before the DRS uh, window closes, which will be within this or the next lap. So yeah, we're going to have to make some decisions. I don't think we're going to catch Paris before DRS closes. So we're just going to have to try and overtake him on the, the old fashioned way. But is Russell going to be able to get the overtake done now? Maybe. Just maybe. It's still staying at point ninety six, so we might get a wet race with DRS. Which would be insanity on its own. But yeah. Uh, we're going to be struggling a little bit with Russell here, I feel. There we go. And now into the actual damp levels. That should be no, I mean, no DRS. Track conditions change to damp. We are just two seconds behind uh, the Red Bull. Pass in between. But yeah, we're going to be managing tires. We're going to be managing kind of everything here. And we're going to see if we can get at least Paris by the end of this race. 16 laps to go. And we have received a safety car. Um, I have no idea what has happened yet. But there is a safety car. Piastri has crashed out. Heading down the straight. Oh, and the car with a nasty crash. He put his name on the wall. But yeah. Uh, the question now is, do we pit and get a slightly better ties? I'd say not. Because it's kind of hard to... Let's put it this way. It's very hard to guess what the AI is going to do. And if it's going to be rain, we are going to get stuck behind other cars. Paris did not pit, so most of the AI will not. So there's no need for us to pit either. But this does put us into an interesting situation now where we're going to be restarting right behind both Red Bulls. That actually hugely, hugely beneficial to us and also to Gasly here, who's actually been able to come out in sixth. Russell has still been a bit of a danger, so we might even get jumped on the restart. So we've got a debris on the track. This does make things fairly interesting. Okay? I'd argue. Yeah, so yeah, driver okay. Let us see. Uh, Russell has been quick. Stroll's been decent. I'm very curious on how that. That restart is actually gonna gonna go if we're gonna be able to get to jump on the Red Bulls, if the Red Bulls are gonna get to jump on us, and if Russell's gonna be able to get us again. Lap cars may now overtake, which means we'll get restarted on this uh, following lap. Might as well go ahead and get everything prepped. Tires are down to temperature. Ploy, I'm gonna go ahead here and give, take a little bit of risk here with Hamilton, give him the high aggression for the overtakes, so which the again, this lap. carries risk. We have just very high confidence, which means that we still have a decent chance of crashing. But uh, we will have our hopes up here that we can have a good restart. I think that's going to be our best bet to actually jump some cars in front. Um, it's just to have a good restart and on that first straight, see if we can launch an attack. So, we're going to keep this going for the first lap here. We are already falling behind the Red Bull, so you can kind of see it there. Russell follows us closely. We're fall up falling more behind. So, Red Bulls are quick right now. And they're actually fighting for, fighting for the lead. Yeah, it looks like we might end up with, over the course of this season, if this is maintained... Three or four teams fighting for the championship, although the Red Bulls are a little bit in their own league right now. And I would argue also that it looks like we might be in trouble with trying to catch him, but we'll do our best. I'll keep on trying to get a move made. We'll see if we can catch up to Red Bull, get past them, or if, uh, well, Russell ends up making a move on us, whichever happens first. But right now, looks like we are getting a little bit close to potentially... 
gaining an overtake done. But no, we're just a slightly too far back. We don't have the top speed the Rebel does. So, yeah, we'll keep on trying. Let's see how it looks by the end of this race. Well, to take a look here, let's watch these cars as they head into turn 10. Struggling with the car. So, Verstappen had a uh, bit of a lockup. And we were able to take advantage of that to get up into second place. But as you can see here, Perez has created a pretty sizable gap for himself. And honestly, we didn't really stand any chance against the Red Bulls. We are happy with Verstappen locking up because Leclerc is fully out. And that Verstappen lockup combined with the earlier safety car probably put him further back than he should have been. We did see that he was kind of parked. So honestly, I think he should have come back behind Stroll. Okay, that would have been more have flag. realistic. But yeah. So that's a P2. Russell with the podium. Science for 6th place. 4th and 7th for the Astons. Yeah, well really Gasly and Ocon. Alpines are now in it as well. Wow. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing if this might actually be the change that we needed. We'll get a little bit of a rivalry with uh, Rebel back again. Since they are now somewhat quicker than us. But it's looking, looking to be a potentially interesting season. And Paris here continues his... Uh, Climb, getting away from Verstappen, scoring not only the win, but also the fastest lap. We are getting caught up a little bit here with Red Bull, but yeah, we'll have to see. I'm looking forward to seeing, it, as I said, if we can get at least these five teams a little bit closer. That would be fun. And there was a comment on the last video that was... Uh, I think I forgot to reply to it. Um, apologies for that. That was if I was planning to do anything with equal cars, equal drivers. And it, it would be fun. But the AI develops in such a weird way that I don't think it's going to be realistic. But I could, of course, try and create a equal starting point. I think that would be doable. And then maybe set every driver to the same stand, same age. That too could be funny. The sign has been completed. Uh, let's go ahead here and have a look at Leclerc. We are missing car parts. Uh, but that's not the interesting part, it's the powertrain. So the powertrain didn't actually suffer that much damage, 60, 60, 80. If we compare it to, say, Hamilton's car, uh, 60, 60, 80. So the brunt of the damage there was actually taken by, I assume, just the front wing. So we're very, very happy with that. And we're just going to go ahead and replace the damaged parts. And also manufacture new ones. I'm a little bit unsure where we're actually at right now with the manufactory, so we'll have to take a look at that in a second. Yeah, a lot of new parts needed to be uh, replaced there, but luckily we did that crash was fairly inconsequential. I probably should have looked at this screen instead. But yeah, that crash, fairly inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, I believe. So, uh, yeah, pretty lucky with that one, honestly. Chassis design has been completed, and this is another one where we focus on top speed uh, instead of anything else. I think we'll do another one like that. And honestly, if the Red Bulls now are ahead of us, I think we have to kind of focus development a little bit rather than making... I know that I said making weight parts could be the way to go. Uh, but if the Red Bull are ahead of us again, we basically did a... We did, we did a research that didn't bear fruit, basically. I feel like that should also be a part of the game. Like, you do a design, and just as Mercedes this season, what they're saying as what's happening on track is what we're seeing in the wind tunnel. We'll, we'll say that's what happened with that rare wing. <laughs> I know, it's a silly excuse, but it's one that we will use the fullest of our abilities. Now, I want to see how well this new one would uh, look. And as you can see here, we are getting a huge increase in the cooling. Turn the cooling down, we're still getting improvements. I think we'll do one more, basically just level, uh, level up, uh, level of chassis before we make a proper one, just expertise grinding, and I think that's 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 okay honestly. Red Wing has been manufactured, so we don't really have anything we need to manufacture right now. So it's just keeping up with the parts that are missing. We're gonna definitely need to get a chassis up and running. Um, we'll have it after Austria. That's fine. Austria is a sprint weekend. Are we getting rain? Available in four days. 37% chance of rain. Let's see what we actually end up getting. We are getting rain. We're getting rain for potentially the sprint and the race. So, yeah. <laughs> potentially not going to be getting uh, 
getting the the test or rather check how close the cars are uh, at Austria proper. I do like to use quality for that. So we'll have to see once we get to probably the race after that again. Sign has been completed, the sign pods. Let's see if this is the same ones that we did. I believe it is just mainly level up piece, small increase in everything. We also have manufacturing slots available to us. Let's go ahead and make a couple of front wings. And also a underfloor, I believe would be a good thing. Did I just emergency manufacture? No. I got really scared there for a second. <laughs> because sometimes I don't really read. I work on autopilot, which is also why there's some complaints that I might move too quick at times. Apologies for that. Uh, but yeah. That, that did worry me a little bit. Now what I am actually very interested in trying is investing CFD into potentially this one right here. Because I'm currently struggling with finding a good compromise. This would be it. But yeah, I don't think we're going to put safety into the side pods. I would rather do it into either suspension or front wing, but I might even just try and do another underfloor with CFD time. Um, because the underfloor is just that important and it affects a lot of parts. So I think we're going to run another CFD period into the underfloor just to see what we can do. Turn the sensitivity down to minimum, turn everything up to maximum. And as you can see, this is going to get us that top speed that we're missing back. So, well, I could do the rear wing, of course, to get top speed. I could do the chassis. I could do side pods. I think just a general gain from doing underfloor would be higher. That's my reasoning. So we're just going to do it rushed underfloor, CFD time. And again, it's I kind of refrain from doing this myself because I don't feel like it is... Um, how can I, how should I explain this? The reason why I usually don't do two CFDs underfloor is because it's actually really, really strong. Because as you can see, they would get a decent chunk of top speed gain, we get a decent chunk of cornering, and we're also going to get, you know, the gear gains once we get the secondary version. It is quite strong to do, and particularly when you're a little bit uncertain on what you want to do, doing double CFD underfloor can be really, really, you know, powerful and easy. But honestly, I would recommend doing suspension, doing the rear wing, the front wing, and then maybe another underfloor. But you get the idea. ATR is starting today. Suspension, side pods, and everything has been manufactured. We do have a data concern. Shut down the uh, the signs for eight days. I think that's okay. We will approve of this investigation. And we shall speed along to Austria. Let's see if we can actually have a even closer race there. I want to get up to race day and just compare cars a little bit. We also apparently have the entire team's contracts ending in half a year's time. That's going to be uh, annoying to refresh. But I think this is just going to be a one season thing that we do for fun. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the analysis here. So currently we are 8th in low and medium and 14th in high speed. So we definitely need to develop the car. We are almost dead last in uh, top speed. In reality, we are. I was hoping that another car was the 20th, but it is us. If you compare it to Red Bull, they're currently third in top speed, second, fifth, first, eighth. So it should be a lot quicker. And you can kind of see it here in the, in the stats. So they aren't super far ahead of us. That's the thing. If you consider that we are eighth. It's just 0 0.035, which is not terribly difficult to come by. And again, they have 87% break calling. Maybe we have buffed our adversaries here a little bit too too much, potentially. But yeah, the Merc here is just weird with the with the low the low ability to handle high high speed corners, which is a rem <laughs> which is interesting to note because that's kind of how their card this year uh, looks. Uh, after Jeddah. So, 
Yeah, I, I think we have maybe reached a point where things are going to get fairly interesting going forwards, and we're actually going to need to develop the car. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Maybe I finally hit that sweet spot. We'll have to see. Let's go to Austria and see how things go. So Q3 has just finished, and uh, I was mistaken. I forgot to do on sprint weekends. Quali is on Friday, so try quali. Which kind of gives a good indication of uh, where we're at here. So as you can see, Paris and Verstappen 1-2, kind of what you would expect. They're about a tenth or two tenths ahead of Alonso in third. We aren't too far behind. We're two and a half tenths behind currently in quality. Norris managed to squeeze himself between us, uh, which was a bit surprising. We have Stroll here. We have Magnussen. And the Mercs here didn't do too well. But let's face it, the uh, difference here between... Stroll and Russell, 215, 216, 217. So these guys, incredibly close. And if you consider that Leclerc is 210, we basically have four cars within seven thousandths or a hundredth. So I, I think we can be happy with that. For the most part, two qualities here uh, weren't too bad. The fastest car compared to slowest car usually was about a second between them. So we are getting closer to having a fairly compact grid, but uh, Austria is one of the shortest grid, shortest grids, shortest tracks on the calendar in terms of lap time. So it's not super representative, but I do enjoy the fact that we are getting closer to, as I said, having a bit more of a uh, competitive grid from basically every car. Now the Red Bulls are still a little bit too good for comfort, so maybe we'll have to try and nerf them a little bit next time around. Uh, we'll have to see. I still want to do this race and potentially one more just to see where kind of where we're getting at. But so far, I'm liking what I am seeing. And uh, again, getting a little bit more competition for Hamilton, getting a bit of a closer, uh, closer grouping would be nice. So I'm, I'm happy with how things have progressed over the course of this episode, at least. But yeah. Let us get ourselves set up here for the sprint weekend. We are lacking a gearbox. We've run that into the ground. And we are going to have to take some penalties over the course of the season, I'm pretty sure. So we'll just have to have to live with that. Now, in terms of what we're going to do here, running the mediums is probably going to just be the best thing that we can do. Run them potentially light. Then be able to attack towards the end of the race would be good. And... I am thinking that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to try and kind of just retain the positions that we're at. Maybe get a little bit further up the grid. It's going to be a dry race. So we'll start in... Uh, we'll start in attack mode. Tune him down to light. And then run like that. Try and make an attack over the course of the last five or so laps maybe. But yeah, you get the idea. Run aggressive at the beginning. Slow down uh, in the middle part. Attack towards the end. We're ready. Towards the end, we just want to keep our position for the first two or three corners here. So our cars inside line, good. Everyone here on a medium tire, and we're also going to go ahead and go rarely defend, as we usually do. And we're also going to go ahead and go back with the battle assist. But yeah, we did maintain our positions at the start here. Alonso actually overtook Verstappen. We might actually fight Verstappen ourselves here. So you just stay online. Understood. Couldn't really get the move done, I fear. That's not a bad start. Let's just have Hamilton try. Could pull it off. Leclerc, we're going to start tuning him down already. Hamilton will allow him to run aggressive a little while longer. Are we actually looking at an attack on Alonso as well? Because that would be pretty big. I'm just hoping here that Leclerc can mostly just hold on to his position while running light. If he can get the McLaren, that would be a bonus. But yeah, I think this is when we turn down Hamilton as well. And uh, again, the goal now is just to maintain the tyres from this point forwards. As Leclerc does, in fact, with the help of DRS, even though the McLaren has DRS as well, kind of get the overtake done. Let's just see if we can actually stick ahead. We are falling a little bit behind here with uh, Hamilton, but I think we're still going to be fine. The The main thing here to worry about is just that we don't want to run out of energy completely. 
And even then, even if we lose, say, the gap to the cars in front, that won't be too terrible either. We'll have another car to kind of act as the pulley. And again, the advantage that we're losing right now, we're going to be getting back towards the end of the race. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing. It's not necessarily a great thing either for that matter, but I think we'll be fine. As the McLaren comes back at us. Well, I think we're going to get the position back. We will. But yeah. We will keep this up. Uh, I think, again, we'll be okay doing things like this. And we'll start going a little bit more standard and then attack towards the end. And I do think that is honestly the best bet for us in terms of uh, maintaining at least 4th and 5th for the sprint. It might be a bit passive to do so. But keep in mind, we have on, uh, on the table right now the cars that should finish 8th or even lower technically. So... We have to be a little bit careful, a little bit, a uh, little bit conservative in our strategies due to that. But yeah, we'll have to see what we can do. Currently, we already have almost a 10% tire advantage towards the other cars. So again, towards the end of this race, we'll be seeing this gap getting, uh, you know, uh, smaller and smaller as our tires become better than our competitors' tires. Let's see how this looks in about 13 laps time. So we're now getting to the point where we have to start being a little bit more aggressive. Verstappen has taken the lead. We have Paris in second, then Alonso. So I think we are going to go ahead and start being a bit more attacky. Now, it's just five laps remaining. I think on attack here, we're going to be running probably five to six percent. So it should be within the acceptable degradation limit, so to speak. But we'll have to see exactly how much deg we take over the course of this next lap. And, of course, if we end up catching uh, the cars in front in any way, shape, or form. Because if we don't, it's probably not going to be worth it. We actually lost way less than I anticipated, so we could probably go and uh, attack a little bit earlier. Usually you lose about 5-6% to 6 while running attack. But in our case, we only lost about 4 So, that's a little bit less than I thought we would. So, that's my bad. But yeah, 5-7, 6-5... We're catching them, but it's probably a little bit a little bit too little, too late. But we are now within DRS, and I think we'll have Hamilton harvest. And we can actually have also Leclerc harvest a little bit here, because the DRS is going to allow for that. And we're probably a little bit late here in terms of trying to launch an attack. Let's see what we can do now with Leclerc. Uh, if he can, get a move made in here into the corner, and he can, so that is good. I was going to go ahead and deploy it with Hamilton because he's falling a little bit further behind than I'd like. So uh, we need to get him back within DRS rapidly. So that's my fault. Basically Leclerc pushing that did create a bit of a bigger gap that uh, caused problems for Hamilton. This is the last lap. Let's see what Leclerc can actually do if he can get one of the Red Bulls by the end of this. Because again, I, I screwed over Hamilton here. Excuse me. I'll honestly admit that. So yeah, the gradation wasn't as high as I anticipated. I probably should check for the sprint. But just about enough fuel to make it over the line. We got close to Alonso, but unfortunately couldn't get it done. But we still improved during the sprint here, and if you look at it from a different perspective, um, there isn't too much of a gap here until you get to signs. So, again, looks like we have succeeded this time in closing the gap a little bit. Just a bit unfortunate that science is that far behind. It's race day. It's race day, and we should have some rain. Just slight, slight drizzles towards the end. Uh, lap 50-ish. Okay. Let's see, what do we want to do in terms of strategy here? And I still think that we could try and do something a bit cheeky. So if we first take a look at the tires, like we usually do. Performance here, two tenths difference between the soft and the medium. Two hundreds of degradations. The soft and medium can be equal after about 10 laps. Uh, any laps you do past 10, mediums will have advantage. Medium to hard, about two and a half tenths. 
Same thing in terms of degradation, so mediums hold in advance for about 12, 13 laps before they become slower than the hards. There are 400s degradation between the soft and the hard tire, about uh, four and a half tenth of difference, so it's kind of the same there as uh, we saw with the mediums. They keep in advance for about 12 laps or so to the hard tire, which means that we probably do want to avoid the hard tire unless we want to be a little bit cheeky in our strategy say run a hard tire immediately and then run say a medium tire into the rainy period that could be what we actually end up doing here because i think that could be fairly quick uh just because of the fact that it's australia australia it's austria it's not a super long pit lane but you do lose a little bit extra time so let's see what we did last time we'll set up a couple of i'll set up a couple of strategies i'll explain why i've chosen to do so and i'll be back in just a sec so I've tried a few different strategies here. Basically, we expect the rain to arrive at around lap 50 for all of these. The This one is probably the slowest. This one is slightly quicker because we have the medium tire. We can also probably turn this one up to aggressive. But as you can see, we actually end up losing time doing that. So there's no point. And uh, the quick say is probably going to be this one-stop strategy. It is going to be reliant, though, on basically um, the rain not coming too far later because if it does we that's the wrong strategy because if it does we don't really have more than five extra laps to really play with here we are gonna have to run the hards into absolute oblivion but i do think that is again just the the best strategy available too as we start on the hards we destroy them and then we kind of make a decision from there on how we want to handle it by running the mediums on life and it is doable and as mentioned, it's probably going to be the fastest thing available to us, so we'll give it a go. Let's see how this uh, race pans out. Here among the Austrian mountains, the grid is now set. The crowd are ready, the cars are ready. It's the so, soft tyres for both Red Bulls. We have some mediums. I see a couple of hard tyres. The Mercs seem to be kind of planning the same strategy that we are. Same with Albon, Debris and Hulkenberg. But yeah, we'll have to see how how this kind of pans out. Because it is going to be... We're going to be slower for at least the first 10 laps or so. Uh, just a virtue of the tire difference. But we should be, after the first 5 laps, maybe start getting a little bit of an advantage. Just due to the fact that we are running attack. The others might not be. And you can kind of see that Hamilton was actually struggling getting up uh, next by Russell. So... We have a little bit of competition this time around, but for now, we're just going to settle in. We're going to be running these tires full attack until the first pit window. That's when we'll have to make a bit of a decision on if we want to stick to the medium or if you might need to make a change. Okay, we're getting closer to the pit stops here. And we're on the optimal pit stop lap, but we're going to keep on pushing. Now, both Verstappen and Paris has pitted. They both went for the hard tires. That's going to be interesting. I assume they're going to stay on that until the end of the uh, of the race here. But both Hamilton and Leclerc are doing fairly well. Hamilton has been held up a bit more by uh, Stroll here, who's been a bit of a nuisance. But generally, we are doing, I'd argue, A-OK. -okay. Now, Verstappen and Paris did eke out about a eight-second gap before they did pit. Uh, which is kind of what you'd expect. They were on soft tires. They hold advantage for quite a while. So it's not that surprising. But what we are going to do now is pit Leclerc. He's going to come out pretty far back, as you can see, due to the estimates. Um, but with the exception of Russell, there should be no one except the Red Bulls ahead that have already pitted. So that should be fine. Now, we are going to go light on these tires because we kind of have to. And for Hamilton, he's going to go around once more. Alonso actually pitted alongside us. Leclerc had a bit of a slow stop, three seconds almost, so can really jump. And even got Hulkenberg sneaking in ahead of him. That's not great. But yeah, not much we can do about that. We'll just have to try and make uh, make some moves to get back ahead. So Stroll pits alongside us. Leclerc is, again, running 10th. We'll have to see here. We're going to be behind both Astons which is not too surprising. But uh, Russell here really benefited from pitting early, but I don't think he's going to be able to keep those mediums. Same here for Alonso and Norris. 
I doubt they're going to be able to keep their ties of it, uh, alive until we get to the rain, although it has been moved slightly closer. So maybe. What do you, lap 45? Potentially viable. But yeah, we'll probably start doing, you know, attack moves a little bit before that if we see the need. Hamilton down to 13th now. What happened? I was busy looking at something else for a second and suddenly he has fallen so far behind everyone else. Okay. So yeah, we have a little bit of uh, work ahead of us here before we get to the rain itself. Let's see if we can actually pull it off, get back into a podium position. So I decided that we're going to take a little bit of a risk here because it seems like everyone is pushing fairly aggressively with the exception of us. And the rain has moved even closer now, 44. So if we go by that, I'd assume the rain will just keep on inching closer and closer. And what we saw during the sprint is that we can run our tires on full attack and lose 3 to 4% a lap with Hamilton running so why they're happened. locking up. Right, let's Not really look, the, the greatest. But you get the idea. We should be able to run full on attack until the rain. Hopefully. And Hamilton did lose like, quite a bit of time there, so we'll tune him down to aggressive just to be on the safe side. But yeah, we'll have to... We'll have to try and regain yeah, some... Some pace here. Currently, he is a good 15 seconds behind his teammate in Leclerc. So, Hamilton not having a good day at the office, but we'll do our best to get him back into a winning, well, not really winning, point scoring position at the very least. So, let's see how this works out for us. So, we're getting very close now to the rain itself. Four minutes. Uh, we had to modulate temperature a little bit here because we have some pretty high uh, drops. It is hammer time. Leclerc's made his way up in the podium position, overtaking Russell. But yeah, Hamilton has had another lockup after his previous one, unfortunately. Confidence is still not very high. And that is a bit of a, as you might imagine, a bit of a problem. So hopefully we can maybe get science before the end of this, but I kind of doubt it. We're running just seven tenths quicker. So we don't really have the laps necessary to get that done, unfortunately. For Leclerc, though, it's looking very good. We just got Verstappen. Now we're approaching turn two. The opportunity begging to be taken. And as you can see, this is when we're starting to see the benefits from, well, the medium tires running them more aggressively than the hards, and the fact that we pitted way later. So, we are getting a little bit of benefit from that. Now, we do need to create a gap, though, before we get into the rain proper, I would hope. So, let's see here. Did we get the RS? We did not. So, we're going to have to just go back to neutral. And try and get the overtake done now on the main straight because the rain is arriving within the next 20 seconds. So let's see if we can get that position back. And then pull away a little bit because the rain is now starting. And it is going up pretty slow. So Hamilton here might be running his uh, tires a little bit too much into the ground. Which would be terrible. But it's not really much we can do other than just pushing at this point. We kind of have to try and keep keep it up as best as we can. Norris is on fresher tires. He has the fastest laps, so he's going to be fairly quick. And using him to kind of help Take us out is probably switch. not the worst idea ever. We might slow him down a little bit, but I think he'll actually help us in terms of just having decent pace on these kind of short tires. We'll do one more lap before we pit both cars. The tires are destroyed. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, tires are destroyed. It is getting, it is getting to the point now where I do think pitting is going to be viable. Tire, the water is still going to just keep on going up. We're going to be on these for about 25 laps. So let's get in there. Let us pit, and we're also going to tune down the the tires here down to just standard, while we get them up to temperature, so we don't shred them immediately. And for Hamilton too, we are going to go ahead and pit to Inters. I'm just going to double check it that I actually choose Inters for Leclerc as well. Because that could have been uh, a bit embarrassing if I put him on the wrong tire. For Hamilton here too, turn him down to standard. And both cars now should be uh, getting out of the pits. Leclerc comes out in 7th. Hamilton is going to come out in 13th. But considering that no one ahead of us with the exception of just 3 cars here have pitted. Hamilton should be getting some of those places back again pretty soon. We'll have to see exactly though how well we do here now on the way the on the proper wet, if you will. So, Leclerc is currently running 6th. Just Paris a hand that has pitted. 
Hamilton is 11th. But Gasly, Signs, Stroll, Norris is not pitted. And probably not going to be able to jump Stroll. But maybe some of the others. So it's not all terrible just yet. Leclerc comes out in second still. Hamilton can maybe jump Gasly. Yep, it gets that done at least. And this, I think, is when we turn the tires down to aggressive uh, before we cook them. Because now everyone has pitted. And the job now is going to be to move Hamilton forwards and also move, hopefully, Leclerc a little bit forwards. But before we do that, with just 20 laps to go, we might also want to try and regain some of our uh, some of our fuel. But yeah, we've been managing. We'll be trying to get the overtakes done. And hopefully we can move up a little bit more here. We'll have to see. It's going to be difficult. And it was involving Leclerc this time. So we did manage to push enough here that we did get the overtake done on Paris. So Leclerc is now leading, which is great. Hamilton has also gotten the move done on Norris. And currently we are actually in a good enough shape that we can run these tires on full attack and not have any big issues. Now I'm a little bit concerned for Leclerc because Paris is still pretty close and he might try and launch a counter attack. But if we can catch up to Ocon, we might be able to get uh, Hamilton up to Alonso here. Which it would be good, but at the same time, it's not been a particularly good race week in this for uh, Hamilton. Been a bit of a struggle, if I if I am completely honest. But at the same time, again, here this is a full race. Top ten here are pretty close, all things considered. So again, I'm kind of happy with the the balance we found. I do say that a lot, but uh, I feel like it's important to say that. But at the same time, um, I would like it to be closer, <laughs> if if we could. Let's see, we are getting very close now to Ocon, so I'm thinking we just do full attack. And we'll see if we can move Hamilton up one more place. Uh, the confidence isn't high enough here that I would like to increase risk, because we've already crashed out uh, once this session. Uh, last race that would be, and I would like to avoid having that happen again. We might just need to fall back here a little bit and recharge. We might just be running a little bit too close to really launch an attack. But... Looks like Hamilton is going to get it done here, just about. And with that, we're just going to keep on pushing and try and chase down Alonso. Let's see if we can get that done. Unfortunately, chasing down Alonso was a little bit too much for us. We've been losing time to him, even with uh, push fuel and push energy. But honestly, it should be okay. Paris uh, has been able to get back through Leclerc. And while seven place isn't amazing, it's good enough after having to do a little bit of a comeback and recovery. So, it is acceptable enough. We are 30 seconds ahead of Gasly in 10. Um, so yeah, while it's been a short lap, it has been a lot of laughing. We probably do need to boost the Alfa Romeo's a little bit. They are suffering. Sergeant and Piastri, mainly just due to them unfortunately being lower rated. But yeah, driver skills are very important in this year's game. So Leclerc wins, Hamilton in 7th. It is disappointing, I know. Uh, we did have good chances, but he had a couple of lockups that put him out of contention. Still leads the championship. Leclerc is uh, chasing him down, though. And due to sprint points as well, Perez is also gaining quite drastically. So we are getting closer to at least a three-driver fight. Although it's basically an inter-team fight. And it would be nice if Verstappen woke up, <coughs> woke up a little bit, become, became a monster. We'll have to see if we can also get Aston Martin and Mercedes maybe a little bit more into the fight uh, in the future. For now, though, I do believe that we'll do one more race, and then we will be uh, we'll be happy with this again. It's a bit of an experiment this save, but I'm having I'm having fun with it. And Leclerc has been. Boosted to a 90 rated driver, driver. Well, Hamilton has actually lost out. I believe he was 91 at one point. So that is uh, a bit disappointing, I'll be honest. Underfloor failure. We can replace that. Chassis failure. Luckily, we have that new chassis. And we don't actually have a new suspension. So since we're falling a little bit behind, particularly in top speed aspect, we're just going to install the new suspensions on both cars. And I'm also going to go ahead here and manufacture. A couple of new chassis because we kind of need to at this point we're going to be losing out if we don't even if we do want to make a new chassis in the future and rare wings as well here we're going to have to make a couple of those so 
is looking good. We are already manufacturing underfloors, so it looks like we are mostly caught up on parts. And we are also taking over now into a new month. So development update, Hamilton was 90. I just uh, thought he was 91 for some reason then, I assume. And Leclerc's improves overtaking slightly. Confidence, the board has a high confidence. The chassis manufactured the report here. We are losing out to the other teams, which is understandable. We are the worst team in dirty air. We are the worst team in top speed. So we do need to work on that. Now in terms of the pick crews here, uh, what do we want to do? Let's have a quick look. They're still tired and they're going to still have fatigue going into uh, the British GP. So I think I'll have a look at the pick crew after Britain, probably at the start of the next episode. Uh, I think would be a good idea. Yeah, currently team-wise, Mercedes, Aston Martin, they're still pretty far behind because still most of the top four spots are being monopolized by us. Might need to give them a little bit extra push to get in there. But I feel like there's been more competition in this episode compared to the previous ones at least. So we're at least moving in the right direction. Okay, we did indeed discover a fault with the wind tunnel that could have escalated. It's been resolved. Uh, company's decision been paid off. So yeah, we did the right thing there. I feel like the... I feel like making, just saying that, oh, we're going to check it, unless you really, really need a path for a race to score points for position, you probably should just accept those um, those events. I feel like that, they're usually just, it's usually just a better outcome to accept it rather than deny it. Okay, we're already at the British GP, and I think we're going to keep on doing what we have been doing. One driver, top three, five races. Uh, finish position, one driver on the podium. And Q3, let's go ahead, two drivers there, qualifying position, both drivers in the top 10, aka Q3. Let's go to the British Grand Prix, see if we can keep on having a good time. Bolly, it's going to be rainy this time around, so uh, let's hope that we don't uh, end up in trouble. So qualifying was a bit of a nightmare this time around, um, as evidenced by what you can see here, Hamilton, First place, Leclerc third, Norris second. So it went very well for our team. You can see Verstappen in fifth. We have both Williams in here. Only one Mercedes and Alpha Tauri of Nick de Ruiz and Stroll. And Perez down here. Alonso, Sainz. Generally, the wet Q2 made things really, really weird because there was only a couple of minutes at the end of the session where it was dry. And Silverstone does have a bit of a problem in the sense that it has a lot of corners and the AI, while they are getting out of the way now in races, they are still pretty terrible at doing so. So uh, yeah, as you can imagine, it makes things a bit painful. But we are gonna have a dry race here. I think we're just gonna go for a pretty basic strategy. Uh, two stopper is what I'm thinking, uh, which is again, kind of basic, but yeah. Two stopper with two light soft runs do sound to me like a pretty good deal. Um, there isn't really too much you can do in Silverstone in terms of messing around with your strategy. We could try uh, have a look at this, for instance. But generally, Silverstone doesn't really have too much wiggle room in terms of the strategy you can do. But as you can see, medium, hard, both of these would be quicker. But if you take into account that you have a little bit of wiggle room here, I think we're just going to do medium, soft, soft. But this is also a good strategy. Again, if you have a stable car, have a little bit of wiggle room. But I want to play a little bit safer because we did have an incident in Quali where Hamilton actually had a spin. And when you have no like wiggle room, like that previous strategy, that spin can be kind of deadly for your race. So while this is technically a slightly slower, I think it's just going to do work out better for us in the end. So that's why we're going with this strategy over anything else. With that in mind, let's just get started here. Jump straight in. And we've had good setups. We are kind of get running low here on the engines. But uh, for Leclerc also we had to, sorry, for Hamilton, we've also taken a new gearbox. But we these engines should survive this race and maybe even the next. But yeah, we are getting to the point where we are going to be breaking out another engine fairly soon. Let's see how this race goes. Just double checking that we have everything set up correctly before we get started. Anticipation is high, and the drivers are ready for this. The British Grand Prix. And it's lights out. 
Lights out go. and away we go. Looks like we had a decent start. Norris in second at his home race. We've had a little bit of an incident here. Virtual safety car uh, after one. the first corner. So we can have a debris on track. Paris has jumped up to ninth place immediately. I don't answer that between Russell and uh, Williams. It does happen. But yeah, Paris has made it some work. It's happened in 12th. Those are the two main rivals, Sergeant and Russell. Yeah, Both of them are out. That is uh, a bit unfortunate. Understood. But it does happen. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to live with that. But this is actually kind of good for us, though, because it does slow things down. We're still going to be pushing uh, through this first stint, kind of like we usually do, but we'll be able to extend a little bit. It'll give us a little bit more life on the soft tires. So we'll be pushing these mediums into the ground. And then we will be pitting. And then it's kind of ironic here that we have past Piastri currently running last. And Norris with fastest lap in the in the points. So yeah, gonna be interested to see how that works out. Norris already though has fallen down a position. Leclerc being very aggressive here. We've already eked out a bit of a gap there. They are running hard tires though while we're running mediums, so it is somewhat understandable due to that. But yeah, we'll see how we look once we get closer to the first pit stop. So far, this is looking very, very promising. The breeze with a bit of running wide there and waiting for, uh, well, waiting for things to, a room to get back in. But even then, five seconds behind the rest of the pack here. I'm very curious on how the uh, Red Bulls here are going to go. If Sainz can get up higher and uh, where exactly Norris is going to end up by the end of this race. Let's see how things still go. Yeah. We've had another incident. Uh, seems to be a bit of a lighter one though, as there's no uh, safety car. Albon and the Haas, by the looks of it. Slight touch allows the Red Bull, the other Haas, and uh, Sainz as well to just slide on through. But yeah, so far on lap 8, Stroll's actually really quick on his hard tyres there, and it's kind of. Uh, Kind of problematic, honestly, because uh, he's kind of keeping up pretty well. He's just two seconds behind us. We're pushing these mediums. He might be pushing his hearts a little bit. But as can imagine, the two Aston C keeping up with us is uh, not necessarily a good thing for our strategy here. So we'll have to see how things look once these tires have been run completely into the ground. We're getting pretty close to the pit window, as well as we have another yellow flag. Hulkenberg is the first to pit. Leclerc is going to be the uh, second one to pit. And as you can see, we have stretched these tires uh, a lot longer than anticipated. That so is going to be tips, uh, beneficial. Limit. And we're also going to be pitting Hamilton here on the next lap. No one else does pit, so Leclerc actually comes out in a bit of a nice window here in terms of... Uh, in terms of where, to, well, where he comes out. A lot of free air after he clears Gasly. Eight seconds up to the rest of the pack. So uh, it's not the worst window that we have elected to pit uh, our cars into here, I dare say. Uh, it'll depend though heavily on how quickly we can clear, in our case Gasly, and in Hamilton's case here where exactly he too does come out. 2.7 second stop, should be fine, he might even sneak out ahead. Nah, comes up behind. But yeah, that's our first stop, and as mentioned, as long as we get Gasly it shouldn't be a big deal. So we're going to give Leclerc a little bit of extra helping hands here. And because of the way that we have now saved a bit of tire, we could go a little bit aggressive over here on the on the mediums, or sorry, on the softs as well, to just make that overtake a little bit easier to pull off. And Leclerc has already done so. And we did beat Paris out of the pits. That's kind of important. And now we'll just do the same here for Hamilton, help him clear Gasly. And then we can start closing up the gap to the cars up front. So... It should be a pretty simple affair from here on, unless we have issues with, say, temps. As you can see, the fronts are slightly underheated, but I think we will be fine. So we're going to keep things going here, see how we stack up when we get a little bit closer to the end. Alonso now does pit. Looks like he had a bit of a pit stop error with the... Yeah, he did, with just how long it took. So that unfortunately does ruin the Aston Martins race a little bit. Gasly 2 ate a pit stop issue. So yeah. That's a bit unfortunate for them. Norris is leading currently at home. But for now, 
let's just speed things along here and uh, we'll see where we stand once we get to that final pit stop. Science is pitting right now, but I would assume that for the most part, the cars in front, with maybe the exception of Magnuson, might be trying to pull a one stopper here. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they uh, how they fare, so to speak. So interestingly enough, right now we are getting closer to everyone having pitted. Paris and Alonso are kind of running the same strategy that we are. I think Norris, Ocon, Stroll. And Verstappen, for that matter, are going to try and use these mediums till the end of the race. That's going to make things a little bit interesting. But currently, we are basically safe down to Ocon in terms of pitting again, or rather Magnussen, probably. So I think we're fine. What we're going to do here is try and extend that gap just slightly by running attack now until we do pit. See if we can create a bit more of a bigger gap to Paris. That would be nice. So we're going to push these tires and then we'll be pitting uh, before too long. So currently it's looking really, really good. Ocon and Stroll are gaining on us, as you can see, but we are extending the gap to Magnussen and also to Verstappen, as he's currently stuck in a bit of a DRS train. Perez is uh, somewhat keeping up with us, which is not amazing, but it is what it is. And we're going to be pitting now uh, Leclerc on the following lap. Might be keeping them out a little bit too long, but I think it's fine. And because we kept them out so long, I think we can just run these uh, tires on standard until the end of the race. But yeah, we basically kept them out a little bit longer than we should have. And for Hamilton here, we are going to be pitting on the following lap. And he's going to be even worse off than Leclerc because of how we... Well, how I mishandled this. Leclerc is coming out of the pits right now, though. Alonso is pitting in behind. He also had a bit of a pit stop issue, but let's face it, it was very minor. 4.8 seconds uh, stationary. And... We should have no problems here with uh, overtaking the cars in front. And I think running standard is fine. It's going to leave us a little bit exposed towards the end, maybe. But if you consider the times right now, we are basically just a couple of seconds behind Ocon and Norris. It's actually a bit of an interesting position then. So I think we run light for the time being. And then once we get to the back of the cars in front, we start planning and more aggressive maneuvers. But yeah, this is definitely hurting Hamilton more than I would have liked. The fact that I basically pitted a lap too late. We'll have to see exactly where we come out though. If we can sneak out ahead of Leclerc, that would be amazing. But I doubt that, particularly with a 6.9 second stop time. So the pit stop errors here, really, really causing uh, problems there. Because let's face it, if we didn't have a pit stop error, Hamilton would be out ahead of Stroll. So now we do have a little bit of work ahead of us here in terms of... Uh, Getting our way through these uh, these cars in front, and then trying to place place to chase down Norris. So, is it amazing? Nah, not really. But it should be good enough that we can. I, I think we have good enough tires here, good enough tire advantage that we'll be able to catch the cars in front uh, before the end of this race. So we'll work through that. Paris might be a little bit of a problem. <laughs> problem. Uh, but I think we will be fine. So, we've been working our way forwards there. Hamilton gets Stroll. But there's still two cars in front of us. We have Leclerc and we have Norris and Paris. Eight laps to go here. I still think that we're in a good position. I have turned up the uh, usage, tire usage a little bit. But yeah, we're about three and four seconds. Well, four to five seconds behind Paris. And with eight laps to go here, I think we're in a in a good quite a good spot. Unfortunately for Norris, it seems like his strategy is not going to be working super well. Uh, it's going to be... It's going to depend, though, on if Alonso has what is needed, really, to catch him, or if his tires are going to go off before... Alonso's tires are going to go off before he catches Norris. So, it's a little bit of a weird situation right now, but uh, I think we have a good chance of catching Paris, provided, of course, that Norris doesn't end up being a massive roadblock, which he kind of currently is. But uh, yeah, with one car following the other, we might do a double overtake here, even with that energy usage for Hamilton. And we do get it done. So that is really, really good. Three seconds now behind Paris. I do believe that we can chase him down over the course of these last five laps. And then we'll just have to see if we can actually get the overtake done. Currently, Sonoda still holding on to 10, Sainz in 9th, Ocon, Verstappen, Stroll and Alonso, and Norris with a surprising 4th place. Let's see, again, if he can hold on to that for the last 5 laps here. 
There's only three laps to go here, so we have decided that now is the time to start chasing down uh, Paris more aggressively. And uh, we are basically there already. We could probably buy our time a little bit, charge the car a little bit more. But I think this is as good as time as any to try and get the move done. We have to get both cars passed, so that's going to be a little bit challenging. And for Norris here, as you can see, he has both Astons chasing him down at the moment. So Paris and Norris here kind of has the same uh, scenario going for them. Hamilton gets the move done, and we might just do the same thing that we did to Norris, where one car follows the other, and both of them get the overtake done. Uh, due to that. So that is looking very, very good. Double overtake. Uh, Stroll has got Norris on the, in the other fight here. And honestly, I think this is going to be a pretty simple and straightforward one too for our boys. Paris is just barely holding on to DRS, but I think he lost that just before the DRS uh, line. And judging by the fact, it didn't close down. Very, very likely. Final lap. Cars are running basically inside each other. Let's pray for no lockups. And I don't think we're going to gamble on fastest lap here. We're just going to allow Stappen to potentially have it. Norris is still being uh, kind of saved here by uh, by Stroll. Honestly, Stroll overtaking him might have been the actually beneficial because it allowed him to hold on to fifth. But yeah, Leclerc and Hamilton. We're just going to allow him to run till the end like this, I think. Now, Leclerc's tyres are worse than Hamilton's, which uh, is going to give Hamilton a small advantage, but looks like just a final attack there for the last couple of corners. And Hamilton does win. Leclerc comes second. Paris is going to come third. Norris still in fifth between the two Astons. So, unfortunately, Alonso's tyres wasn't enough, but let's face it, Norris's tyres are also kind of shot. Verstappen. Coming into second, uh, seventh, not second. Then we have Ocon, Sainz, and Tsunoda. So, fairly interesting. Mercedes is still a little bit weaker than I'd like, I feel. But uh, the field is definitely a lot closer than most of my saves, with 17 seconds between first and uh, seventh in this case, and that half minute we had earlier from first to tenth. So. Could be a little bit closer, let's be honest, but I'm happy with how this uh, is. And with that, we now have Hamilton finally gaining some points on the rest of his rivals. Perez and Leclerc here getting very close. But Verstappen has had a pretty terrible start to this season. Um, as we're almost reaching the halfway point. So that is kind of surprising, honestly. The Aston's pretty firmly here in third at the moment. Mercedes is in fourth. But... Uh, yeah, we might need to give them a little bit of a boost, both of these teams, and maybe even give the Red Bulls another little boost. I thought they would be stronger than this, and let's say so, we even had a couple of uh, pit stop issues, but honestly, if Alonso didn't have his pit stop issue, I think it would have been far more uh, dangerous to us um, than what it ended up being the, the case here. Suspension design has been completed, and we'll have a look at that. It's the one that we want to manufacture. It is a small increase. Uh, particularly the brake cooling would be nice. But I think for the time being, we'll just run the ones that we have. And I think since we have developed so many suspensions, that the next move might be to just focus a little bit more on the front wing, uh, the side pods, for instance, getting these up to basically boost some of the other stands would be nice. So we might make continue making these just to get a little bit extra engine cooling, get a little bit extra top speed. So I think that's fine to just uh, focus on. I think, as I mentioned here, that the, the suspensions, I think we have reached a point where we're going to get some very diminished returns if we continue focusing on them. Now, car anal analysis-wise, we're still basically third best at this point, third to fourth. We have gotten a lot better in top speed, but I still believe this is mainly due to the fact that a lot of the cars haven't actually gotten their... Uh, uh, the car replacements on here, but if we take a look at Red Bull, who is for sure the best car, they have one and a half kph on us, acceleration mainly engine. We're pretty close on the DRS. We're pretty close, honestly, on most of these stats except for the cornering for medium and high speed, and their air tolerance cooling is uh, pretty amazing compared to ours. But yeah, I'm still kind of miffed that the AI just won't shed uh, weight. I feel like. Uh, 
I feel like their ability as a stat is kind of wasted in the sense that, yeah, sure, pass were out, but it's not really a huge part of your budget cap unless you do a lot of emergency manufacturing and things like that. You're usually going to be fine. And this is the best vote you can get. Extra gearbox, extra ERS, extra engine. We are going to vote for that. And it's probably going to get uh, voted down. We'll have a look at that next time. Let me know what you think. Should we give Red Bull a smart and Mercedes a little bit more of a boost? Same with Alpine and McLaren, maybe. Uh, because currently, they are falling a little bit back again. But I do feel like this has been a fairly close fight where we haven't been guaranteed to win. But that last race in Silverstone was pretty good. So again, give me your opinions. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.